Hey guys, Josh Kent and Gerald Phillips here with U.S. Arms Company to bring you another episode. Today we're going to be talking about Camp Perry and the cross the course matches, the, the national matches that are going to go on during what they call Rifle uh, Week or weeks. weeks. It's actually weeks, weeks. plural. plural. Um, so we're going to be going up to Camp Perry here, uh, I think what, the 17th, something like that? Yeah, we'll, we'll start shooting on the 17th. Yeah. Uh, somewhere around there, and then we're going to uh, be competing in the 800 AG matches, the the NTI, the Presidents, and so forth. And so, what we're here to bring you guys today is some of the gear that we use during cross course, cross the course matches or high power service rifle matches, and uh, give you a brief history on Camp Perry and its lineage. So, to talk about Camp Perry first, uh, Camp Perry in 1903 the national matches began and it was started as a, a, a means to promote marksmanship uh, across America. And those that were in the um, service, armed services or armed forces, would come together and compete on who was the best marksman um, in America. And, and that found so much notoriety that other countries started to come out and compete against Americans. And, you know, all of the, you know, the stigma of being a crack shot and, you know, oh, yeah. back in the day of, you know, you know, being a great marksman was one of the things that you were kind of heralded as, um, yep. you know, that's, that's, that's good old America, right? And um, so the, the national matches have gone on every year, except for the, the co except for 2020, yay. Um, but they've gone, they've happened every year and the best marksmen and shooters come out to test their mettle of how good of a marksman are they against their peers. And it really is just a blast. You meet some of the, the, the greatest people, you meet legends uh, yes. in the shooting community out there and it is just awesome. Um, I've been shooting out there for a couple of years and I've met some of the, the greatest people. And in the shooting community, unlike most communities, in the shooting community, like. They, they genuinely want to help you and they want to see you thrive and do better. And I, I when I first got into it, I know that um, there were several times that I needed something yep. and uh, the guy next to me was like, oh, you, you need a sled? One of these right here? Oh, here, borrow mine, you know? And uh, so if, if you guys are, you know, shy about getting started in this sport, um, don't be because the shooting community uh, uh, in this sport right here, they they'll give you the shirt off their back. I mean, everybody I've run into is just yes. absolutely amazing. So, um, so Gerald, let's, let's get talking about some of the gear that we use uh, during cross, cross the course and the reasons why. So, Gerald, kick it off for me, man. First off, I uh, wanna say thank y'all for joining us. One of the, the most important pieces of equipment that is kind of overlooked is, is the shooting coat. Yep. This is a stiff back coat. Uh, there's actually two kinds. There's a there is a soft back and a stiff back. Soft back is more of an international style coat. You'll see those more overseas. The like stiff a biathlon, back, biathlon, yeah. triathlon, stuff like that. The stiff back coat was was designed specifically for service rifle shooting. It aids in keeping your posture correct. And as you can see with the, the stiff back jacket and the service rifle jacket, just by laying the arms out, you'll see that the arms are pre-bent yep. and they're really stiff. That's to aid you into getting into your position. When you bring the rifle up, there, there's a standing action, and, and steady it. Yeah. There's actually places on the coat that provide support and, and traction. And yeah. traction. One of the things that, that people don't like about the coat is the fact that in the standing off-hand position, you have to have it so tight on your body that it, it eliminates some of your natural wobble and that's inherent in your torso. Yeah. I've seen some guys that run them, you know, fairly loose, fairly loose, you know, they, they just kind of relax in it, you know? So, I mean, it, it's really kind of, kind of a preference, preference thing, thing but it's test, test and, and see what, what works best for you yeah for me it works best if it's really tight up yep. against my body and then you got the you got the pad right here for the buttstock your, your buttstock position and everything if you're wondering what these large 
uh, traction pads are, are for. These are for the, the seated and the prone positions. It's basically just to keep your arms from sliding around whenever your, your position is built. Uh, this, there's a padded section right here on the front. This is yep. where your, this is a right-handed coat. This is where this particular portion would actually create traction against this portion yep. to keep allow that. you to hold the rifle more steady. Yep, keep that, keep that front elbow postured up. You know, you want to get it up as high as you can. You don't want your head leaning forward. You want it as, you want your head in as natural position as you can possibly get it. And that allows you to do that. Uh, another thing is the shooting glove. Some people in the offhand don't use a shooting glove. I do it because it helps me get, it helps me with my natural point of aim as far as the height yeah. uh, of the rifle. It, it's just so much easier to, to do that. Uh, I. Josh and I both shoot an inverted uh, forehand. Reason that I do it is because it just feels more natural. Yep. Turns it all. It almost gets your hand up a little bit higher, which brings the rifle up a little bit too. To get it yeah. up closer to your chin. Like I say, the closer it is to your chin and your jawline with your head straight up, it, the better off you're going to be. It's just comfortable. Yeah. It's just more comfortable, and you can stay in that position much longer. Yep. Uh, I'll talk about this right here. So this is something that uh, just a little little case with some um, torque wrenches and stuff for your optics. One of the one of the best things to have because in an AR platform, there's really nothing to really torque down except your optic. Yep. And again, we want repeatability. So you you know having one of those in your in your bag to check your optics before you go out to the range to make sure all the settings are good, invaluable. Invaluable. Absolutely. It's, I've seen guys that their scopes get loose and they just can't diagnose the problem because they don't go back to the basics. Yep. Uh, one of the cool things that, that I'll say that, that I see Josh use is this mitt. Yep. The, the mitt, for some guys, it allows them to get the weapon system up even higher in their hand a lot of that one's for the seated too. And this got these is, little short arms, little T-Rex arms. And so I got to bring the rifle up. It's 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 really neat. I, me personally, I don't have to have one. Just some people do, some people don't. But it's it's a good piece to have in case you need it. Uh, like I say, the the offhand gloves are a little different. Josh's is a different color, but it's. Another thing too that these do that they provide is um, when you guys see a service rifle, a cross the course rifle, they're shot out of a sling. So you do not get a bipod in this. And a lot of times when we set up in the uh, seated or the, the prone unsupported and you're in that sling, we use the glove to, to cut down the pulse or blood flow. So as your heart beats, if, if you're in a good tight position, you'll see you'll the see it pulse. In the scope. Of, of your of your rifle in your scope and and a lot of this helps to dampen the pulse rate in your scope to keep you in that 10 and X ring yeah. you're not you're not going to get rid of all of it you'll get rid of a 90 good. 95 percent of it enough that you can stay on target and within uh, we prefer to stay in the 10 ring no the pulse to be <laughs> yeah. no bigger than a 10 especially with the wobble that we have because yep. that's just inherently natural. Uh, one of the one other thing that that I'll tell people that is to me is a necessity is a shooting man. Yep. You don't want to get down on especially on days that it rains because guys, if it's not thundering and lightning, you shoot. Yeah. And and if it is thundering and lightning, well, if it's thundering, you're still shooting. You're still shooting. And if it's raining, you're, you're still shooting. shooting. <laughs> so you you want a mat to kind of keep you off of the wet ground. If the mat gets wet, you get wet on that. At least yeah. you're not muddy. Yeah. That that's that's a big. One. Yep. And uh, also in service rifle, we use 20 round magazines. That's the standard. You can use a 30, but you can't use anything smaller than a 20. And a lot of that was based off of what what's the military using. So when you see service rifle, one of the biggest things is like let's take a an infantry rifle and use, use that platform, like the M1A, yep. the AR platform, 
And another reason why, like they went to optics, because it used to be just iron sights, right? Yes. And they went to the optics back in 17 because the military had gone to optics. So the 20 round magazine is a stay because the, the military still uses 20 round magazines. So being the NRA and CMP rules, they still use 20. You can use a 30, but it kind of gets in the way. Yeah, it, yep. especially in the in the prone and the seated position, that third round magazine can, can really hinder building a good position. If you you like like yeah. us, we're we're kind of small, yep. shorter guys, so our arms aren't aren't as long as some people. So, yeah. and we, you can't rest it on the ground. Can't rest it so. on the ground. If it's touching the ground, you're disqualified. That's, yep. Uh, one of the things that this is not a must have, but it is a very very nice to have, is the sled. Absolutely. This allows you to single load your ammo and the standing offhand and also the yep. prone position. At the 600. At the 600 yard yep. line. It is, to me, is it is invaluable because I don't have to fight with a standard magazine and it's much easier to single load because it, uh, the bullet just sits in there on top of the sled. It, yep. It makes it a lot easier to just lay that easier. round up there and drop the bolt. Drop the bolt, then yeah. you have to look in. Literally, you're dropping the, the round in there with a standard magazine. You have to look at it to yeah. make sure it's oriented correctly or if it's not tilted up or tilted down. Yeah, It, it just makes life so much easier. Because if you drop it at the wrong time, the bullet gets caught in the barrel extension and, and now you've got a damaged bullet and that's all, all this other problems that yeah, happens, you, man. You just, you're losing time, plus you just lost a round of ammo. Yeah. And uh, hey, the last thing we have up here is the spotting scope. Also, hey, that is a must have, yeah. guys. So shifting this over, bringing this to the center here. So the spotting scope is a must have because again, we're shooting at range, two, three, and six. And especially at the 600 yard line, we're shooting, you know, 5.56 five, NATO, 223 Remington. And uh, that round is not really forgiving in the wind. No. It's, it's not a it's not a 65284. No. It's, so, it's um, a little slower than Yeah. I mean, well, we can get some hot rounds out of it, but it's still it's, you know, it's still a 223 and and so when you guys start into uh cross the course or service rifle, having your spotting scope is a must have, guys, because you are your own wind call. So, while you're in position, you break position, take a look through your spotting scope see what the wind's doing, make a dial on that optic for your wind call and uh, your best guess and send it and hopefully you get an X out of it. Yep. One of the things that, that I'll, I'll tell folks is that at the 600 yard line, a four, five, four and a half power scope is not a lot of magnification. No. Uh, if you have a lot of wobble, you will see that if you have crosshairs, the crosshairs would literally dance all around the black. The black is a nine, entering a 10, very centers and X. And that's at the 200. Goes out to the eight at three, and then out to the what, the seven? Seven. Seven at ring at 600, that's right. yeah. That's right, seven ring at 600. Yeah. So you can, if you think that you're staying in the black is good enough, no. at 600, it's, it's not. No. If you shoot a seven, and especially at, at Camp Perry, you just drop three points to get some of the best shooters in the world. Yeah, and that's so you. You want to you want to know where where you're hitting at, and the spotting scope allows you to do that. It, they they do mark the target, yeah. but at 600 yards, I don't care who you are, you're not going to see the the lines on the target to see where they are. Yeah, and you need to see it that that's way. Tough. If you if you make a wind call and it's slightly off, or you you broke the shot clean, yeah. and it, it strikes the target, you're either left or right because your wind call is slightly off. You need to be able to see that. And with the spot and scope, you can. Yeah, absolutely. It, it allows you to just to read, read so much more in, of the environment than just your naked eye. Yeah. And lastly, right here, we have a stand for it, right? So when we buy a spot and scope, it's just the spot and scope. And then we have a stand that we can adjust up or down into our position, whether we're seated, prone, standing if you want to and um, adjust it to where it's comfortable for us to take a look into it. All right, guys, and lastly, after all of the gear that we have here, the last thing I wanna bring out is that when you show up, the am ammunition won't be provided for you in these matches, you'll have to bring your own. We just have a, a sample here, uh, Gerald and myself, we load our ammunition 
for uh, the two, the three, and the 600. So at the two and the three, we load 77s for magazine length so that it fits for uh, semi-automatic fire. And then for the 600 yard line, we load them long so that we can shoot single load. So again, you know, you can use whatever ammunition that you'd like, whether it's factory or store-bought or hand loads uh, of your own. And again, something to talk about later in another video, we're gonna go over some hand loads and how to work up a load for your service rifle with Gerald and myself. Yep. So that'll be... Uh, you're, you're in that particular video, you're gonna see two different ways of, of looking at it. Yep. But the end result is going to be the same. It's two different accuracy. ways coming together. It's accuracy and position. Yep. Just getting there is going to be a little different. Absolutely. And, and lastly, I know that looking all of this stuff here, but one would ask the question, like, how much does all this cost? And there, there's so much out there, you know, eBay, Gun Broker, of all these places that you can get, like a used shooting code. It doesn't have to be brand new. Again, the guys that you shoot with in this community, they just want you to go out and have a good time and compete. That's really what it's about. Um, so you can go anywhere and find some of these, uh, like an old shooting mat. As long as you got a shooting mat, it's fine. It doesn't have to be the best. Use uh, shooting coat. It could even be the the, the soft back. You know, exactly. just, it, just whatever, whatever whatever you can get into. Yep. Even if you can't afford to get a used coat, come out and shoot. Yep. Where somebody will, will let you use their coat. Or you could just still work on building your position. Building your position. That's you know? that's one of the things that I like to do is at home I like to build a position without a coat just to see how it feels. Just in case I have to Exactly if I'm ever in a situation to where say I'm hunting and I need to I have a the only thing I have in my hands is, you know, a, a rifle and I need to build that position quickly and effectively. I can get into position and make yeah. that shot and be very comfortable doing yeah. so. It, it's just it's a technique. Just a technique. Yeah. Just just give it a shot. Don't so, don't shy away from it. Yeah. So again, guys, taking a look at this stuff, I, I remember when I first got into it, Gerald as well, you know, I I I used used stuff getting into it and yeah. I slowly worked my way up. So it, it didn't break the bank. It's an absolutely fun sport. A lot of camaraderie, a lot of history, a lot of Americana in it. And uh, yeah, uh, we would recommend it to any of you that are out there looking for a, a competitive uh, rifle forum uh, to, to get out and compete against your peers. Absolutely. Yes. This, this sport is not just for old guys. This sport is for everybody. Absolutely. Come out, come out and join us and see, see how much fun it can be. It's going to make you a better shooter in all disciplines. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, we thank you so much for being here and stay tuned for other episodes. If you're a first time watcher, click like below, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions whatsoever about this, the rifles, the gear, what have you, reach out at info at usarmsco.com. And uh, again, guys, as always, we love having you here as a, as a watcher and subscriber to the channel. We'll see you again soon.